Dr. Leon, people have questions that I hope you can help us answer. There's obviously a logic to why in different countries, some people lock down three weeks, some two weeks, some a month. And why on that scale and what would be beneficial and what would be actually counterproductive if we did certain things. Can you explain to us in practical terms why this is important? You cannot meet anyone else during this time. Let's say I were to meet my family and then I meet up with my brother, my immediate family in a way, but different family units or my brother-in-law, I would inadvertently take my virus to the other family and in turn create another cycle of spread. Hence, it is extremely important for this method to work that I only expose myself to my family members, have little if possible or best no exposure to anyone else. At the same time, on your phone which you carry around with you, use the app called Trace Together. In the event one of the individuals whom you've met has the virus or you have the virus, you can forewarn the person who's using the same app to notify him or her that she has been exposed to the virus. The rule is this, as little contact with anyone as possible. Keep your contacts within your family and you will be safe and you will have done Singapore that favour that part, that Singaporean citizen role in controlling the virus. The incubation period of four weeks will break up into two incubation periods or approximately even six cycles mm. given that most of the virus will show itself in five days. This should work for most cases. But if you look at what Wuhan and a city as well as Hebei mm. province has done. They needed two months or four incubation periods and even 10 yes. possible cycles. We need to be prepared for this, that there may be an extension. Yes. How long the extension will be is actually dependent on how hard we try now. The more we confine ourselves, the shorter the pain, the shorter the agony, the faster we go back to normal life. So I urge all listeners, try your best, res resist the urge, the temptation to go out. On you should only go out for your very basic necessities, for your actual essential items. Clinics and all essential services will still run. If we fail on this effort, we may even have to stop some of these essential services. But that will be really drastic. That will spell terrible for Singapore. Now, Singapore is not the right city for a complete lockdown. Yes. We don't have enough food supplies. We, don't, we are too dependent on each other for daily living. Can, many families do not have enough food or some even don't cook. Yes. And they will not be able to do without food services for three days and their food in the fridge will run out in three days which means food business have to carry on which means supermarkets have to carry on this is on top of dental services, clinic services, hospital services then how do healthcare workers go to work? they have to take the public transport that yes. means the buses, the MRTs as well as the private hire vehicles and taxis yes. will have to run then what about electric services? what about gases? If you think about it, a basic system of maintenance must carry on and Singapore is not appropriate for the Wuhan lockdown. Some basic must maintain and we are literally very close to the mark of sustenance for daily living. So Singaporeans, if we do it now, we do it together in total unison. Yes. Okay, we want to hear the lion's roar of solidarity. If we hear that, we do that, we can break out of this in four weeks. Work with me, join my hands together and work together. We can do this together.
So Danny, we were talking about the healthcare workers mm. now because it's been two months of stress. Mm. Um, we'll have to deal with all the post-traumatic things later, but even right now, you can see tensions because they're tired. It's 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 not nice being in a PPE. That's right. Mm. It's not nice every day swapping down the screening tests. Mm. The people that fog the place, and you're all the time in the back of mind thinking about your families, but also um, many of them are isolated in their own funny ways. What what advice can you give to them now to stay in touch, to to remain sane and even happy now? I think we have to accept that there is a certain limit in reality. I think sometimes when we deal with things that we say, oh no, don't worry, you know or we kind of brush it off by saying, hey, uh, you know, just talk on the phone, but it's different. So I think we need to understand and accept that, you know, uh, it may not be ideal, there's a compromise and there's a cost and, and not pretend, you know, that uh, everything is fine. But having said that, I think technology is always there. You know, the person, we can talk to anybody anytime now, you know, uh, FaceTime. And maybe, you know, some of the companies, uh, I'm just asking, you know, telcos, they want to, uh, you know, uh, help, you know, by saying, you know, uh, data is now free, you know, or something for like that. Workers. Yeah, for healthcare workers, yes, that's exactly. You know, uh, so, so that I don't, so I don't have to worry about blowing, you know, uh, you know, my, 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 my data budget or my children can, uh, you know, very easily just call me or whatever, you know, and stuff like that, you know, so, so I think... So, back up your point was that try to create space in a day. As often you feel you need it, it doesn't have to be long, but get, get away aside and try to connect to what is also real in your lives and with mm. technology. You can speak to your spouse, you can speak to your children mm. Mm. and and they could respond in kind also, mm. right? Then everybody mm. helps each other to mm. spread positive messages. Would mm. that help? Mm. Yes. Yes, and that would be very helpful. And what I said suggested earlier, have have a drop in stress center. Mm. You know, where a staff could just say, you know, I, I need time out, you know, I need to go somewhere. I need to talk to, you know, a mental health or, you know, a counselling process. I need to deal with some things, you know. Uh, I, I'm kind of feeling the stress, I'm cracking up, you know, and stuff like that. We also talked about family members just now. We, we, we talk about, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, as neighbours, as a community, uh, we can do little acts of kindness, you know. We can actually help each other, you know. Uh, Right, uh, support each other, and and maybe you know. Especially I, for the spouses and the that's children, right. where their 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 dads and moms are really just mm, yeah. in the front line. Yeah. Yes, mm, mm, yeah. So I think I think that's that's something we all can do. Uh, but yes, there's a cost, and yes, there's a sacrifice, and yes, it's not entirely the same, and yes, no, uh, it's that's an ideal. But I think in seasons like that, we we yeah. just have to make do lah, You know, until such a time where things come better again, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's the other thing, right? We just have to keep telling ourselves this will be over. That's right. And it's nice to know that something will be over. Mm. Keep yourself well, keep yourself sane. Mm. And when we come through this, everyone will come through it together. Mm. Mm. And I think, I think that too will allow us to be able to have more stamina and more yeah. hope. I think one of the key things now is really about, you know, creating positiveness, creating hope, yes. yeah? And allowing ourselves not to just always uh, be negative, allowing ourselves to say that, you know, oh, no, this in itself, okay, will actually pass and there will be good things that we will actually get out from this. Uh, yeah, and I think that will be helpful. Yeah. We really want to tell the people out there, you know, please think of the healthcare workers because they are the ones, if anything happens to them and their families, you've really lost the support line. And for their sakes, for their sakes, just stay at home stay safe mm. and just pull the rules because this is not this is not role play this is real and some are really really tired mm. so we really appreciate that everyone can chip in at this time for the sake of these people who really really treasure as singaporeans we also need to step up we are resourced in every sense of the word we've We've got good government, social infrastructure, we've got wonderful planning, we've got societal norms that others really, really are watching. So many of our ministers as well as just our digital portals. People are literally taking the information there to do their own 
COVID-19 playbooks. I mean, that's a real endorsement. Can you share with us what you're seeing? Because I know you help in the third world countries. The same kind of care you give to home-based, palliative, sick children at home, you're also trying to help other countries and you've been doing it. What do you see the needs are and where can we help? I think we are blessed to be in a society and a country whereby a lot of us have very systematic ways of thinking and troubleshooting a problem. Um, and a lot of us are used to following protocols and checklists and protocols and checklists are actually good for protecting frontline staff. Yes. Uh, and so I can see that not only just frontline in terms of clinical uh, uh, contributing to how to improve clinical care in the developing countries but something might, we might be able to value add mm. is that ability to develop processes and systems for places that don't have that. They need the protocols too, right? Yeah, and they are struggling, they are firefighting. Yeah. If we have resources in Singapore that we can just share yeah. and people can just translate into their own language yes. uh, they, that they could follow after. Give us an example. I know you've been doing work. Give yeah. us an example, for example. So, for example, um, in a developing country, primary care, for example, community health clinics, mm. uh, how do we actually roll out, uh, how do we actually triage patients um, who are high risk or who are not so high risk? It really, really depends on the context yeah. and the patient population that we're serving. But um, simple things like that. So for example, home care. Yes. When things become stay at home yeah. or overseas when there's lockdown, how is it still possible to carry out a home care service? Yeah. Do we need to convert into telemedicine? Telemedicine might be a very powerful thing, but how do we convert into telemedicine in a way that we know that the clinical issues are still being sorted out in a reasonable way yeah. uh, and yet and care is still delivered and yet our frontline staff is protected? And so it's yeah. almost like a, a playbook when say you've got a bunch of even normal people but they are visiting or checking on yes, yes. the problem yes, yes. kids with par uh, uh, kids with, with medical issues that now may be vulnerable. Yeah, you yeah. give that knowledge to those frontline volunteers if you can call it that way. Yes, it's protocols, yes. right? Just brainstorming, you know, like yeah. perhaps that's something Singapore could do or even training. Uh, so in a lot of the developing countries, they have community health workers. Yeah. Uh, how do we train community health workers? Simple things like uh, hand hygiene, yeah. you know, the yeah. moments of hand hygiene. How do you wear and remove a, a mask? mask? What if we need to reuse the mask? How do we keep it safely and then don it safely yes. so that we don't contaminate? Um, can we do videos uh, to train in their... I mean, they could see our videos and convert. And if it could be converted into their language. That would be very powerful mm -hmm. um, and, and could really help these uh, overseas countries in a very big way. So rather than, than even thinking about sending out doctors, which you can't, um, right now everyone's locked down, is, is to put education material that's contextualised for their communities, is yes, that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Okay. Because our protocols and systems are tried and tested, yes. can we convert it into their languages, into simple videos and then use that as a resource for them? And I imagine if I was a charity working in one of these countries, that might be something very useful to me because things are happening so fast. Yes. They also still have to struggle with the clinical issues on the ground. But what if I can borrow yours and convert it into my yes. language, contextualise it or simplify it for my people and then keep my staff safe, you see. I think those are really important points and, and we are definitely going to try and revisit them and we are definitely going to look you up. And in many ways, you know, we are blessed in more ways than one. We've actually got the whole world here and I think these are initiatives that we'll look into, but thank you very much. Really appreciate this.